Hey everybody, how's it all going? Um, today I just wanted to do another tutorial, a short tutorial on how to uh, paint across UDIMS in Substance Painter. Uh, now I know this feature is not yet available, it's still probably in a closed um, alpha or something like that. We haven't really heard anything about it yet. I've not seen any sort of footage on YouTube or anything to show us how they're, they're actually doing it. Uh, but I've got my own sort of workaround, which I'm sure a lot of artists are using while, you know, while uh, playing around in Substance Painter. And I just want to show you the workflow that I've got, and hopefully this will help you guys to be able to paint across your UV, your UDIMs in such a way that it makes sense, that, you know, it ties the mesh together. So I've got here my working mesh for, the, for a project that I'm currently doing. So I'm just going to basically start skinning this. So I've got this leather part over here. You can see, um, well, it, it's sort of like the skin, the leathery skin. And then I've got this, what I like to call a bit of a, you know, some sort of an armor shell across an exoskeleton type of armor. So I want to, uh, you know, add the, um, um, add the skin sort of uh, layer and then have like the uh, armor over here. Now on the texture set list, I've got quite a lot of uh, UDIMs. So, for example, the head right there is on one, and then I've got these sides, and I've got part of the armor as well. So we're just going to focus pretty much on three and five over here for our intended purposes. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm just going to add a fill layer, just for, you know, just for the sake of it. And let's say we're going to put a color of around, well, some something like that. Uh, actually, let's go for more of a reddish kind of color, but not too much. Yeah, something like that. You know, it's orangey. That should be fine. You can see over here, I've left this on purpose. So you can sort of see the transitions between a an UV and another one. And these are generally the areas that are going to give you the most um, issues. Because if the UV was then in such a, well, sorry, the, um, yeah, the UV uh, unwrapping was in such a way that we could go around this shape, you know, we wouldn't really have a problem here. But because it's not, and you got the UV of the um, exoskeleton coming uh, out through the leather skin, then you have to sort of fix it. Now, if we were be able to paint across UDIMS, this wouldn't really be an issue, but currently it is. So we've got the we've got the texture. Now let's go to the exoskeleton, and I'm just going to add this Omnia Subsidian on top. Um, and you can see sort of how you know different these two textures are, right? Now we're just going to go back to our to this texture. What I also want to do is I want to add a um, uh, I want to add the scattering effect. Just make sure we're on PVR metal roof, and we've got substance scattering on um, and the we've got the map over here and scattering is active you can see um, one of the things that we want to do is in the shader editor you know we may want to bring in the uh, scale of this and nothing really seems to be happening um, but that's because we basically don't have the you know don't have it on so you can see what happens when i add scattering which is quite a nice effect now one thing that you would want to do over here is maybe you want to add the uv um uv map so mesh three that's what we want so i've just added the uv as a as a scattering map that will help the scatter to be as um, you know as accurate as possible Right, okay, so now we've got scattering in there, we've got the we got our texture. So one thing, well, the main thing that you want to do uh, in order to make this work properly, you want to right click your fill layer. Let's assume that this layer is now finished. Actually, if I'm, uh, I'm just going to go into Smart Material and hopefully this will load and I'm going to add a uh, dirt modifier on top. And that's because I want to give it a bit more, um, you know, uh, just just a little bit more of a of a change. Now, I don't know why the layer is not loading. Come on, layer, you can do it. Uh, okay, so we've got this dirt layer on top. Doesn't really matter how it looks. We're just trying to play around with the settings. So we've got the dirt layer on top. And now what I want to do is I want to select all of these. So shift select everything right click and say group layers and now it's all under one folder right if we right click this and we play and we press in say in instantiate across texture sets 
and we select none over here but we say yeah we want to put it on the head we want to put it on number five and i don't know let's say yeah something like that okay so what's going to happen now with this texture the substance painter is going to calculate and the texture will go across the head side piece and then we'll go where the where we got this uh, sort of carapace type of a, of a texture over here actually i think i should have instantiated the texture to go on this layer on this texture set as well but you can see it as it's being applied right now to the head as well and it's going to whatever change you make to the base layer to the source layer it will then run across the entire mesh uh, for that texture that you've applied now this can be very useful when uh, especially when setting up the base color of your mesh right so now you see that the mesh is uh, taking taking over our entire uh, texture over here now what i would like to do is i would like to add the same texture to over here as well so i'm going to say instantiate again um and now i'm just going to say none uh it's a bit of an odd one right so we were doing 105 actually let me just see what sort of texture this is 1007 um I don't know why it's running so it's sort of blocking a little bit i don't know what substance is working so hard it could be from the sub from the scale of the subsurface modifier that i've added here so i've just taken that down a little bit so yeah so i've just um i may want to basically subsurf the um this texture again and say insane across and then we want 1007 as well so I've just selected 107 as well in there. I've just added that to basically to the amount of, of textures that we've got the instantiated uh, layer to go over. Uh, and what this is going to do, this is going to ensure that our base color for the mesh is the skin, for example. So yeah, I try and do this. If it's going to be a general texture across your model, like it is in mine, you know, I've got, I've got this leathery skin everywhere. So if it's going to be a, a, a general texture across across your model and it's going to be like the lowest level, you may as well set it up as a default one. Now, whatever change, as I said, whatever change I will go and do into the main layer, which is 1003. So let's say the, you know, in the fill layer, actually in the dirt base, I may actually not like having the height and the normal. So what this is basically has done is it has um, deactivated this across the map. So you can see how it, it basically affect, affects everything. Um, so it's all about, you know, in this case, this dirt is definitely a bit too strong. So I'm just going to go in the mask editor over here. Um, and I might actually just do an invert and let's see how that looks like. Yeah, that should be a lot better. Again, this is all depending on whatever texture you want to use. That's uh, your call right okay so now we can see that uh, you know our texture doesn't look too bad because obviously we've got the same one running across so of course it's going to match up but what happens when we go back to the armor here and we got this ominous obsidian and we drag it on top and now you can see that it's sticking out like a like a you know a, a four in our side but what you can see over here is that wherever where i instance the where i instance the um the material We've got clearly now we've got this covered, which before we didn't, and this is actually a. Um, uh, let me just find it. See over here, this is actually this is not where the this um, armor goes, or on this side over here. But what we just did it ensures right now that we can paint over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a black mask on top of the sorry, not a white mask uh where is it now uh invert now oh yeah should work so got a white mask over here added and what i want to do in my uh, omnia subsidian if i paint this will take the um it will obviously delete that well not delete but hide the um the obsidian so i want to uh, grab maybe a dirt brush and just go around here and start painting you know painting out the um uh the obsidian and you can do this a lot easier when you go for example in something like um you know the um uv so over here for example this should be, should make life a lot easier 
So something like that. And if we go back into our render, you can see, sorry, in our viewport, you can see that I've now blended these textures together almost seamlessly over here, right? Now, in this scenario right here, you can see that they're not exactly matching up perfectly. But in you know, in, in basically, you'll never get them to match perfectly unless we're able to paint across units. But this is definitely a lot better than what we originally had, as you can see over here, right? And you know, we can go across, we can paint some more, and just try and make it as believable as possible. But this this has now blended this area together, and you can see down here we have another one of these situations where we may want to blend a little bit more over here. And then um, we could copy this uh, layer. So just copy this layer and then go to this to this uh, texture set and then paint the obsidian over in here. But we obviously now want to clear this mask. Yeah. And we want to paint the obsidian in. Um, like so. So it's all about again about tying this shape together depending on where you need to. So over here that's the obsidian we'll go back to the layer uh, by the way to shift between layers without pressing the texture sorry the texture set uh, shifting between them without pressing them. You can just do control alt and right click. So I'm over here and I'll need to eliminate this texture set and then going back and forth and I know this may sound, seem tedious but actually it's going to be definitely worth the effort in the long run because it will make your texture seamless and just in my like in my previous tutorial I just want to give you uh, another tip in this one uh, if we add a um, layer right here on top and we make sure we change everything to pass through so normal height roughness metallic and the normal if we change these to pass through and then we go to our clone tool uh, if you press V and then click anywhere on the layer you can now paint with that uh, with that um, a texture over on, on on the seam over here and thus covering the seam entirely uh, this make it a lot more seamless and it's all again you're gonna have to balance this one out until you get the proper result but you get the idea of how this functions um, and basically yeah that's uh, that's that's how to blend things uh, nowadays in substance painter if you don't have painting across UDIMS like you do in Mori so just another one another example over here um, we want to oh by the way whenever whenever you do this layer with pass through i would definitely not keep it on if you plan on painting some more on the texture because it's going to be very uh, resource intensive so i'm just going to go over here and do some more painting just to make it a bit more seamless um again it's just i think uh, you, you'd, you'd rather go more the first time you know into the, the part of the texture that you don't want to change and then just wipe that clean off like like so um so you can see it's not exactly looking the best that it can but it's actually you know it's very damn close over there right um and then over here you may want to do another one like so you can see how that blends together in there and it's all it, you know your eyes will see what your eyes want to see so it's very important to um, um, you know manage your expectations of how this works because unless I mean if you have UVs that are working against you like I did here on purpose then this is sort of the scenario you're going to have to deal with in order to blend these textures but anyway, I hope you guys found this, um, you know, these quick tips um, um, useful. Uh, I definitely uh, would like to hear some feedback on this. Maybe you have some more ideas on how to do this even better. But for the time being, this is what I found works best for me. Um, especially, you know, you've seen the you've seen the, um, the thumbnail of this creature. You know, I've finished the texturing it, and it's actually quite, um, you know, I'm quite happy with it just by using this method. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Uh, if you really enjoyed this, uh, please leave a please leave a like, a subscribe, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.